Welcome to Savage Session Podcast. And uh, we, today we have got myself and Mo. And of course, we have got Carlos from Guyana. So again, this is, I'm so excited. Very, very excited to talk to you. I didn't have time to talk to you much in um, uh, in Malta. We just say hello, hello. But now, now is the time for us to talk, my friend. This is a Sheffield series episode we're doing. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I must say thank you for the opportunity, some of the sensations and more. Again, you guys are great, uh, such a very far distance. Uh, uh, the, the heat is on for Sheffield. Uh, I was uh, looking forward for that invitation since, since last year after I competed in the Commonwealth Powerlifting, where, which I punched my ticket for the Worlds in 2023. I was looking forward for Sheffield uh, terribly. Sad that uh, it, it did not fulfill. But uh, here I am, qualifying, having some decent numbers now. Uh, my bench press, uh, I know it's kind of big to have every... I, must, I have over 17 international coaches now. It's like, yo, Carlos, oh, um, you, do you need a help with the bench press? Do you need a help with the bench press? Do you need a help with the bench press? I was like, damn. My bench press is growing, but you know, I wish you could hit those 200 numbers. Once I hit those 200 numbers with the numbers I have right now, trust me, it's a very, very big scenario on the 93 stage. As, as a, the top five already see what I'm capable of, especially the top three, Mr. Gustav, Mr. Jonathan Kaiko, and let's not forget Mr. Gavin Aiden. That guy, damn, bro. But better you have to wind it down. I was once young. I'm not old, but trust me, I was once at that level. You get the high top, you get in all those stuff. But one thing I'll always say to every single athlete, you have your own grind, you have your own, uh, what we could say, adrenaline and stuff. When it comes to being you, you be you, bro. But when it comes to... Uh, so discipline and attitude is one thing that lies on humbleness. Humbleness. A lot of people are like, oh, Carlos, what do you expect from Sheffield? I don't expect nothing but the best. It's just another day in the gym. Just that. Here's what. The gym is training, literally training. But for a championship, for me, it's graduation day. You train and train and train to get it right. So when that day comes, is not to get it wrong. Amen. Amen there. Amen there. Amen there. I mean, again, it's like, it's exciting myself and probably I can, okay, more, more can echo what I'm going to say. We're all excited to see you guys going up against it at Sheffield. So, again, Sheffield, I've, I've been saying this for to a lot of people, it's not just a championship, it's a show. You know, it's a place where legends are born. It's a place where you build a legacy in terms of like, whatever you do at Sheffield will remain forever. Do you know what I mean? And yep. um, when where people like Gavin is going back to Sheffield is because of what he did last year, Sheffield, you know? So that things, that performance is set there, that set him apart of everybody else. I mean, my first question to you, Carlos, will be, of course, powerlifting, Guyana is not really a big powerlifting nation, right? So. How was your experience leading to Malta this year? Because again, as I said, you're coming to a country like Malta to Europe, which is a long, long flight, and you're going up against arguably the best weight class in IPF in history, which is the 93. So how did you prepare yourself coming to that? Yeah, uh, well, for and foremost, uh... My brother, I'll say this, it's not a, it wasn't an easy journey and still is not an easy journey because, uh, again, powerlifting is still growing here in Guyana. And I must say this, even though I'm the big boy here, <laughs> trust me, I'm just a big boy here or in the South American region. A lot of people are like, oh, Carlos, you made it and stuff. But the point is this, I got to market myself. I'm not afraid to speak anything of this. If I don't market myself as an athlete here in Guyana, for example, seeking sponsors, uh, reaching out to try to do an ad, 
try to do a small advertisement to try to do a small, for example, take a pick with this bottle or this cup and say, here's what, drink the best coffee in the town and try to make a dollar to get there. Trust me, I won't be able to make it to Malta or much less New Zealand. My tickets alone from this part of the world is almost, if I don't book early, I'd be paying almost 3,000 US dollars just to move from here to reach it. To my next de to my next destination, so that's one of a what we could say a uh, a crucial one for me. And uh, on the next level, finance is one of the main difficult aspects for me here in Guyana. Because yeah. I'm a certified crane operator, I gotta go, I gotta make a dial, I gotta put bread on the table, and also I gotta find time for train. So sometimes I work night shifts, sometimes I work day shifts. I gotta still gotta find time to train me. I still gotta find family time. So there's a lot of sacrifice uh, myself as an athlete and more so the other upcoming athletes uh, here in Guyana have that challenge. So myself with so much uh, that I've put forward, uh, lots of people not just look up to me, it's like, yo, Carlos, uh, I love the strive, uh, keep pushing, keep uh, keep the good works. You understand? Because I can say this, there's many days and many nights that have been sleepless. Mm. You understand? My hands are quite grown, torn from either wire rope, late nights, uh, got to be rubbing my eyes, got to be over, <laughs> overloaded with caffeine. But I got to keep pushing. So finance is one of the main constraints for me to reach any part of the world. Now I'm getting a, a fair opportunity not to showcase what I have, but more so to carry a full nation above my shoulders and uh, able to portray, able to show, yo, I've worked my butt up to get to where I would like, uh, not just to be, but to go and even go beyond. Worlds was the, what we could say, the cementing for me to show the world exactly, yo, I have a lot more. Yes, my bench is kind of whacked, but uh, trust me, if I had to put 35 kilos on that 170, uh, it's a big impact, buddy, a big impact. So, I mean, for, for me, like, uh, one thing is like, I know you touch a, a lot of things in terms of like the issues you face and you getting to this side of the world. And of course, we understand powerlifting because it's such a niche sport in other countries is not as big and plus in the other country there's not as much financial incentive into the sport so i just want to touch down in terms of like guyana itself you know the sport of it because we spoke to rondell from trinidad and tobago from the uh, the caribbean uh, rondell was talking about things like in trinidad if you make it to the world stage you perform where you win you go back you actually consider that as a proper athlete and you get the support for these big company in terms of like the sponsorship. So how's Ghana, Guyana then on your side? Because as you said, you are the only, you are the, the, the poster boy in Guyana. So do you benefit from uh, you being the poster boy against everybody else? Or is it just like any other nation where they don't care about part of it? My brother, trust me, it's easy said and done again. If you don't market yourself here, I can send you part of my portfolio. And trust me, you're going to be left with your mouth open. Like, what? Trust me, I have quite a large portfolio. For example, I started bodybuilding, but it wasn't that, uh, what we could say, quite a success. I, I know about losing two years straight. Then I switched to powerlifting. From powerlifting, strongman, I maintain it. And ever since I touched strongman, I've never faced, uh, what we could say, a defeat and uh, uh, below the top three. Mm -hmm. Recently, the powerlifting, uh, uh, besides uh, South America number one, Commonwealth champion, then the national champion seven years, uh, and uh, now world champion, well, upcoming world champion. But again, marketing is one of the greatest things I have to do to obtain finance, so I could be able to move myself, so I could be able to set uh, certain boundaries uh, and even put the bread on the table because uh, I cannot train 24 hours just like any other top rank athlete. I don't even have a competition wage for my own to train. I got to ask the federation 
oh, um, is it possible I can uh, request uh, the training uh, rocker or the training weights for at least two weeks or three weeks? They, they, I don't, I'm not afraid to say it. They're quick to say, oh, Carlos, uh, uh, remember, if we give you, we got to look at others. And uh, it's a whole refresh. So right now I'm trying to facilitate many things uh, for myself. A lot of people say I'm selfish, but I got to put myself first, buddy. I'm sorry on that level. So I get the opportunity with quite a few friends from the U.S. now. It's like, yo, Carlos, here's what. We're going to help you to come over. We have some Patna gyms here. I'm quite uh, abreast with uh, quite a few of them. It's like, uh, yo, once you get to hit those numbers, we good, bro. We're going to support you. So that's how I'm able to move around, get some stuff done, and able to train. Here in Guyana, I'm currently at one of my one of the gyms I train at. I'm downstairs at the restaurant because it's quite cozy, quite uh, more relaxing. And it's a... Uh, Comfortable. I mean, again, what well, that's that's the key. What you say, comfortable. You don't just get a comfortability elsewhere because elsewhere, although things can be the way they are, but things can be difficult. But if you're comfortable and you have got a support network around you, it makes things a little bit easy in terms of like training. You know, what I mean, pushing yourself. Especially, um, I mean, my next question to you is. You are in Guyana, and of course, you don't have uh, potentially you don't have um, world class ninety threes, right? In Guyana, that you can measure yourself against. So, how do you maintain yourself in terms of saying, okay, I keep on, I need to still keep on pushing, even though I don't have competition? How do you do that? Because some people, for instance, some nations, they they don't even have it in nationals. So it means I don't need to push. You know, I'm the number one in the country in the history or whatever, I don't need it. But people like us, if I fall like two weeks behind, I'm, you're not going to see me on the international space, a, a stage. So how do you yeah. actually keep yourself into that competition uh, com, competition mindset? How do you do that? All right. Uh, competition mindset. One of the four things I'm, uh, I do. Um, I can only talk about my experience and I can only talk about how I go about doing stuff. I always train, no matter what. Mm. But, so, for example, uh, if you've seen my stuff on, on IG, I'm a, I'm a, I already clocked in log 11 of 12. But, so, for example, if I'm not training for powerlifting, my power mode comes up, click. You get me? Just like a button. I train up to 500 pounds throughout the year. You get me? If I have a competition, don't have a competition, I'll be doing 500 for 10 reps, 500 for 12 reps, and that is it, okay? That's from one plate straight to five plates, 500 pounds. Well, for example, there's three months or two months away for a powerlifting meeting. All I got to do, first week, wow. I do a slight deload, and then for the next week, I click on that power switch, and within three weeks, I'm already at 650, I'm already at 680, and even 700, everybody in the gym is like, Jesus Christ. What is he preparing for? Yeah, I just, I just got to click the switch for me. Yes, my, again, um, when it comes to, uh, for example, my bench press, is, I don't have to click off or click on a switch. I just keep going and going and going and going. Setting PRs every two weeks or every three weeks on my bench press, even if it's a five pounds, it's great. But for a squat and deadlift, within three weeks, I'm already back in my 700s. And everybody's like, in the gym. Like, damn. So I, I'm always training. I don't rest one week. I don't rest two weeks, much less three weeks. If I rest three weeks, trust me, something is wrong with me. I have some financial distress, in which most likely is a bit far. But I prefer to go to the gym, laugh, skin my teeth have a joke or even try to cheer someone else on but that's how i go around uh better than myself i don't click off a switch because oh there's no power lift to me i'm always training even if they uh sometimes they will ask me to come out for the novices or the intermediate meets oh carlos we would like you to judge oh carlos we would like you to spot i don't have a problem i'm always there to give an extra hand also but training i'm always there for example, how do I keep abreast with the other competitors, which is, let's say, the top 10 ranking athletes? 
Look, all their numbers I have in my own file. So I know exactly where I stand, I know exactly where I lay. So I was like, I got this. Quite a few people here again who told me, oh, Carlos, you're going to war just to compete. I was like, wow, really? So some people was gambling against me, they lost. And some people were like, yo, when Carlos means business, he means business. So I, I told quite Carlos. a few of them, even in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I had a quick question. So you've said that you give back to the Federation. You go and help out for novice competitions. You go and help out in certain things, right? Do you get any, so in terms of traveling for competition, do you get any support from the Federation to go to this international competitions like Malta, Commonwealth and whatnot? My federation, I said to say this, they do the nominations, they do the preliminary, all the fancy paperwork, they do. You get me? But, yeah. Uh, sometimes I seek and request sponsorship letters in which, since I'm an international athlete now, I get the international um, roster, for example, official invitation for almost any world meet now. Prior to that, now the federation gets it too. The federation will nominate who should ever have reached that stat and so forth, in which you have a national team already, in which, yes, I'm the top dog, everybody looks up to Carlos. But prior to that, now we, we are the athletes now. Now they are putting certain things in place to minimize the stress for athletes to go out there and seek sponsorship, literally beg for money to get certain places. So the federation plays a key aspect because if the federation does not put in nomination or does not does not send in nomination or nominate athlete, we won't be able to go nowhere. So when but, a federation nominates an athlete, sorry, when a, when a federation nominates an athlete, does that enable you to get sponsorship to go for this international competition? That even though you still have to put yourself out there to companies, there's... Once you're nominated, you have access to funds for comp to compete, to travel, 50, pay your 50. tickets and whatnot. 50-50. Okay. So, so in 50, terms, 50. I mean, in terms of like, I know the federation. Um, um, I know some nations, the federation do a bit more in terms of helping the athlete. I'm talking about like um, um, flying your flights or your accommodation or some help. Do you actually, do you guys get it from your federation or is it just like your name is there, get yourself to that competition, compete, they don't give a shit? I won't say to that extent, uh, previous years, uh, we could say yes, but uh, for the past two to three years, uh, I can say no to that because uh, now we have a new president and uh, now the federation is pushing more. They're marketing themselves more. They're marketing the sport more. Uh, now we have, uh, besides myself, uh, you have about two other world, world class athletes that sat there, uh, juniors. One is a sub junior, one is a junior. You have Romeo Hunter, and then you have uh, the next guy from Trinidad, well, he's a Guyanese. Uh, Dominic Terrell, he performed very well in Romania, both of them, but uh, uh, sad to say, Romeo uh, bow out on the bench press. But I know, we I know Dominic Tyrell, actually. Yeah, I actually yeah. know Dominic Tyrell. I, I, He's I, a junior. So. Funny enough, talking about Dominic, I talk, I speak to Dominic pretty much on a daily basis. We are in a group chat. Yeah. This group chat. I think there's, yeah. a, there's a meme of him deadlifting, actually, where yeah. he's doing his setup. Yeah, he has got so nah, much. He has a crazy setup. But with yeah, that, yo, when Dominic hits Guyana, and, and we are on the stage, right? We have the, the, the hyper intense because uh, there are some guys out of the zones, right? Right here, guys, it's like, yo, I'm gonna beat Carlos. Nah, I'm not gonna beat me, boy. <laughs> nah, that's fine, man. <laughs> I mean, nah. So, Dominic is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 he's, he's such an amazing guy, and he has got tremendous deadlift. He has got a bright future. One of the things about it because he has a good head. Do you know what I mean? Because there's some people you meet, they have got these expectations that they can't meet. But almost like he's now moving to the A3. That's what I'm talking now. He's moving to the A3. Mm -hmm. now. He was just yeah. once. He had a good meet. So yeah, talent is coming out of uh, uh, Guyana. Guyana. So from yourself, Dominic, and the other guy that you spoke about, is there any other athlete that you're thinking they're coming up? 
Uh, they have quite a few athletes there. However, again, you have mentioned it yourself. It's not quite a financial benefit, support, um, beneficial, what we could say, sport. And I was, uh, it, a lot of athletes expect, I can say this. I am not in the game for, we could say, for money on the long term. Okay? Yes, we're going to get money, we're going to perform and so forth. But there's a lot of athletes here in Guyana, for example. I can point out three marvelous athletes. One, you have Romario Gonzalez. He was a marvelous junior. And now he's an open. He's, uh, he, he had controlled the, the 59 and the 63. I believe the 69 also for the juniors. Now he's in the open against uh, the next uh, upcoming, well, he was Commonwealth champion also, Mr. Vijay Rahim. Rahim is, uh, he was, uh, Rahim controlled roughly about uh, three weight classes. You have the, he was in the 59, he stepped up to the 69, and now he's in 74. And trust me, even though he's in the 74, he still carries a steam, but again, these fellows, if they do not see any financial attachments, say, because you're just performing and performing, what you get, what you get, sorry to say, you just get in a medal and a pat in your shoulder and say, keep up the good work. My brother, I've, I've come through the, the, the rough and tough, and I can tell you, if you don't market yourself, you're not getting it, bro. And that's why those two athletes, they just say, hey, well, wind it down slowly and just remove themselves slowly. You will see Raheem putting up some some decent numbers up to now as a competitor. But for the past uh, two to three years, we haven't competed. Fair enough. Then. I think I think money, money is because, again, as I said, because powerlifting is such a, like, a, a niche sport, financially is always a problem. You know what I mean? You go across the world, you see people have those tremendous talent, but financially, they can't just cross that river or they can't cross on the other side and come and show their true potential and then to be well, honest I, yeah um uh, we are we us here more can echo this we are proud of people like yourself coming from a nation like guyana saying okay i'm gonna go through all the obstacles and i'm gonna go to the world championship to the go world stage and when you came in you did not come for just a participation medal or your wala media photograph no you came in to compete against the best and you've proven that um my leading question to that is now you've tasted competing against Gavin, Kaiko, Emil, Gustav, all the best 93s in the world, right? Because again, as I said in the beginning, what I said, you are in the weight class that arguably the best weight class that IPF ever had, right? And you are part of that history. After tomorrow, when we all give up our deadlift shoe or squatting shoes, you'll be part of that history, right? So now, oh. you've tested it. So what's the future plan in terms of like um, competing against these guys? I'm not talking about just the Sheffield's coming. I'm just talking about as your powerlifting journey. Because as soon as you taste something, you want to just go keep on going. Do you know what I mean? So what is in your mind? What are you, th are you thinking? Okay, I've done this. Now, let me go and do the 105s and compete against Moe and Anatoly. Or oh, after the 105, oh, let me go and be a fat boy. So <laughs> what's, what's the plan? <laughs> yeah, everybody thinks so. you reach the world stage and that is it. Now, nah. my brother, 2019 was my very first year in which was uh, a bit uh, disappointing for me. I had faced a sub suspension from my own national federation. And that year, Anatoly was world champion. Trust me, that year, Anatoly will have become world champion. I will have become world champion. That. I already had 350 kilo for deadlift. My bench press was whacked, yes, but my numbers were to challenge Anatoly for that world title. And I, even though, even up to now, I have a picture with Anatoly because I traveled to Sweden. I almost cried. I was like, damn, I should be on that freaking stage. And I went out, I took a picture with uh, Gustav. Was Gustav? No, Anatoly. I believe the next guy from Sweden and uh, L.S. McLean. Mm -hmm. L.S. McLean, uh, I believe that year he got fourth or fifth. He, 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 he didn't perform well. And that same year is when uh, 
Optimus Prime, well, this guy, Ray Williams, he bowed out on the squad. I was like, damn. So uh, 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 I've been behind certain um, stuff for powerlifting quite a few. So again, to your question, I'm not going to bounce and go to 105 just like that. I have to keep improving. I have to better myself in many aspects, such as my bench press again. And yes, competing among the best of the best within the 93 is not a walk in the park yet because these guys are training the butt off to be the best. I'm training to become one among them. Mm -hmm. Sheffields have given me the opportunity to now I can solidly say I'm one of the best. But now everyone now is training to become one of the greatest. To become one of the greatest, it comes with lots of discipline, lots of time, sacrifice. But above all of that, patience, passion, and perseverance. Without those three, trust me, the cookie going to crumble. And besides the cookie crumbling now, there's a lot of days you're going to say, doesn't make sense anymore. Oh, I'm going to just go over to the next weight class. So it implies a lot. It implies a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, uh, as you say, uh, just going to put down as like, all right, uh, I reach here. All right, what's next? All right, what's next for me is become world champion, hold that title at least for one, two, three times, and then maybe sign off with the IPF or maybe continue with SBD and see what the world extra has to offer. But other than that, I'm not just putting it off because I want to put off and say, I'm going one of five. I completed one of five here in Guyana, still won the national title twice. And trust me, but one of five uh, uh, IPF worlds is not a walk in the park. I will <laughs> place among the top 10, but not the top five. You guys are huge. <laughs> no? My brother? I'm glad you are honest. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to the one of five, bro. I got to be squatting 730 and 750 for reps. I'm not that yet. Bro. <laughs> so I'm not doing 700 for at least four reps. Now that you've mentioned squats, Carlos, right? It's very hard to track your training on social media because you don't say the weight. <laughs> All we see is log 12, day 13, ah. or log 2. Day. And it's it's not calibrated plates, right? So a very preemptive question. I know you, you've you said in your... We, we, everyone watched... I was very excited after watching your SPD video. You said the pie has been baked. You won your slice, right? What yes, slice I won my slice. Yeah, so what slice do you want? Because you just mentioned very quickly you're squatting 700 for four reps, right? What reps right. are you chasing? Let's keep, it, let's keep that to yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, what records are you planning to get at? What are your goals for Sheffield? What, what, what records are you planning to break at Sheffield? Well, every, I must say, uh, to reiterate that, everyone is looking to break records. I'm looking to break a record within myself, carry, push it. But the competition is on. I see Gavin is putting up some decent numbers, but the numbers that he's been putting up, it's quite a challenge, not for me, but for himself, because I've seen him for the past couple of years, and he, he's he been getting called in depth. Uh, I don't know if he's listening, if he's tuning in or so, but... Uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of techniques I've shown in my training before I started. Uh, uh, what we could say training for Sheffields is depth concentration, also known as quad concentration. Everyone has different theories and stuff. For example, you come out with the bar, and you you go directly parallel. So therefore, you're sitting on a stool, and as you graduate, that literally does your pause in position, right? And then you're just going to explore and come up. And then you go deeper with a low stool. And that stool should be literally at least one inch or two inch be below parallel. And trust me, I'm an open book. I, I tell people exactly what I do and so forth. I don't have anything to hide. Look, what I, the ugly thing is that I don't like is that other athletes uh, may tell and say, oh, 
why this and oh why that i think uh, if we are at least we able to share certain things and able to understand each other because your strength may not be mine but your weakness uh, may be my strength so i think it's like yo how can i work with this how can i work with that you understand so yes i'm looking forward to squatting a new world record and also challenge the deadlift the bench press i'm nowhere close to kaiko i'm nowhere close i give him that but here's what that doesn't mean that he's going to remain world champion forever because the game is SBD, squat, bench, and deadlift. One, one, one of them doesn't win, as you, could, as you can see, for the 93 podium at Worlds. For squat, Kaiko was nowhere close. For deadlift, he was nowhere close either. For bench press, I was nowhere close to those guys. <laughs> so... <laughs> Again, I have two to ones, and that same two to one is what I'm going to be brushing some boys. Trust me on that one. Okay. I think I, I think on um, talking about the numbers there more before you you add more. I think yes, we can't talk about bench, Carlos, because me and you can't bench. We we can't touch it. So yeah, you go one seventy, <laughs> one eighty. We can't talk about bench. So let's talk about small. No, no, no. I have a- no, no, I haven't touched 180 yet. No, 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 no. Oh, so, so that means I can bench more than you. Thank you very much. The only no, thing- yeah. No, no, no. Don't, don't get the size of yourself now because I've been training. <laughs> I've been training. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I uh, I don't pose my bench because it's poor, right? I, I know. And I'm surprised your bench is that poor because I'm looking at your biceps there. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, you should be <laughs> benching 200. What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Look at that. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, numbers. I know. So, you uh, want me to tell you exactly why I don't like bench? Why? I don't like nothing from here up in my face. Nope. <laughs> oh, nope. I, 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 you're lucky nope. because this is, um, this is a child friendly podcast. I was about to say something, but I'm not going to say it. But <laughs> <laughs> so. You can, you can, you can pause, come on the air, let me have it, and then go we'll walk on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, I know we, we touched on the squat, and uh, of course, in Malta, you attempted 332 and a half, right? On the, that was... No, 332. 30, sorry, 332. So, that was the world record today you attempted. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think we had Gavin here, and he, oh, again, he's an open book. Gavin is one of the guys as well, like... Um, as much as like um, he has got the arrogance behind him, the arrogance is not about on the bad side, it's on the confidence side. Do you know what I mean? That's why it comes across like that. But he, he has the confidence to become the world best, which is, I agree. If you want to do this sport, you want to be a competitor, there's a reason why you're doing it. To him, he wants to become the best. It doesn't mean how or how he's going to do it. He just want to be the best. So he mentioned something about, he said to us, he want to take the world record on a second. So that means whether chipping or smashing is on the second here. We're talking about 332 kilo on the second attempt. And yourself, you mentioned you're taking the world record squat. What number are we talking here? Because if Gavin is taking on the second, my friend, then you're in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. You sure about that? I mean, are you sure about that? This is a safe. You let place. us know, sir. You let us know. What what we you what we got know, cooking? Sir. This is a safe place. Go on, my brother. If you inbox me directly on WhatsApp, I can send you a video. Again, I'm very very optimistic. You know I, mean? I know Gavin, as I said, and I will say it again, and even I'm on this podcast to the ninety trees especially to those above me. Gentlemen, please bring your A game. I have a lot of room to improve, but that doesn't mean I don't know what's up. The same way you guys are training, I'm training too. So again, if you're biting, make sure you bite enough that uh, you could contend with. But if you do not bite enough that you can contend with, therefore, literally, your bites are... You bite the big, you bite the apple, and it's sour. Therefore, you fail, and you're going to bite again. You don't like it. Please relax, be humble, and come again. Let the next guy, the same apple that you threw away, 
he could be able to satisfy himself. So just like how he's planning, I'm planning too, buddy. I'm planning too. This is interesting. Yeah. I'm excited. More going. I'm so excited. So, I, I was, I was, I was just. Happy to be tomorrow, mate. <laughs> I was so. I had two questions, <laughs> right? So before we get into the squats, I want to clarify this with you, um, Carlos. In hmm. Commonwealths, did you do raw competition where you squatted three hundred and five? And then you competed in equipped where you squatted 340. Or was that on the same day? Or was that two, like you squatted, you, you did one on a Friday, one on a Saturday? What happened in that competition? Excuse uh, Yeah. Uh, we had expected, right? Because in my mind, when I saw the Commonwealth uh, records, I had all of them, except for the bench press. I had squat, dead, and total. And uh, the roster had changed. That was raw first and then equipped, and then it switched. I was like, damn. So the Thursday was fully equipped. I so you, got the, the records. You uh, squatted 340 two equipped who, first, and then yeah, you squatted well, raw after. Yes. Yeah. So if I, I, a lot of people said this, oh, Carlos blew his back out. No, I did not blow my back out. It just that I was sore. However, I have to maintain my body weight because when I pull heavy numbers, I tend to climb my body weight. So how did I maintain my body weight after pulling two big numbers that day? One, I had to uh, fast. I had to fast for at least 18 hours. I did not eat anything. And that is what taxed me for, for the raw. That was a Saturday. So I was sore, and then I was a bit low on energy. But after I win uh, for Raw, I was like, yo, I got this. Even though I had it, I my normal numbers for, for squat is 3 or 5, for classic. So uh, some friends back home, I said, like, Carlos, take it down a notch. I was like, I'm not taking shit down. The guys from UK, um, Paul Marsh, uh, Darrell and few guys from the powerlifting, um, England powerlifting team, um, they have helped me out successfully. I got the gold in the squat and the gold in deadlift, and also the gold in the final stage, which was very. I had to fight for that one because Ken was up on my back. I was like, "Yo, fear, 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 fear." But I had to pull through. But now, I have a coach. His name is Mister. Excuse me, Mister Dexter Jones. He uh, collected me for my raw nationals uh, after, uh, yeah, after raw nationals that's last year August, and from since then to now, he's been guiding me, training me, and uh, trust me, my numbers what you've seen at Worlds, I've got uh, roughly about uh, twenty five to thirty percent increment ratio almost on every single lift. So again, <laughs> uh, Carlos, the numbers, the numbers are moving very insane right now. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, man. Trust me, it's a challenge. You know, give us a target. What's a target on the squats? What number are we looking for on the squats? Uh, here's what I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna send you a video on WhatsApp. You're gonna take my WhatsApp number, and okay. I'm gonna send you a video so you can literally see exactly what's up. And you could determine the depth because Sheffield is not just any championship. It's one of the most rigid observer and judge championship ever on the face of the earth for powerlifting. So yeah. when I send you that video, again, I want you to keep it for yourself. And when Good. you see it, <laughs> you're going to be like, you're going to inbox me directly like, yo, this means business. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't wait. I mean, yeah. let me flip that question, Carlos. So, in terms mm. of so what numbers do you think your competitor will be hitting? I'm talking about Gavin, Gustav, and um, Keiko. What are the numbers do you think in your head? Are you thinking because, as much as like as athletes, I always say this we can talk that we can hit these numbers, 
but on the day you never know especially you 93 some of you are walking 100 kilo you bastards i don't know how you do it so and then you have to cut down <laughs> seven kilos to come and compete you never that's know true. that's that's so true i'm at 95 right now okay that's that's close <laughs> hold on hold on hold on hold on so what numbers do you think your competitor will be hitting okay. <laughs> oh that's it Oh, he's got the abs out. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Jerry, when last did you see your abs? <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to put a belly of beer, bro. But my, oh, I, I'm, at 90, I'm at 95 kilos. 95.4, 95.3. Around that. Very close. Right? Very close. And, Perfect for peaking black. And, right right now. I, and you know and you know what I do? Again, I, I would love to share the world what I do. I eat two meals. Two meals. You know I me? Mean? So when I travel, for example, I have two to three days before Sheffield. You know I me? Mean? I, I you're not gonna see me running a five miles or ten. No, that's a lot of energy. You burn too much, man. Look, I wanna conserve right now. Because well, I wanna peak. You know I me? Mean? Good. Prior to that now, I, um Gavin is right at the borderline. 92.9. There's the next guy, uh, I believe is uh, Emil Krastin. Uh, Emil weighing at 93 kilo flat. I said, like, damn. Honlan, uh, Honlan do direct, uh, he, he does uh, hardcore dieting. He cuts carbs. I, I saw that literally. And when you cut carbs drastically, I can tell you, I was in the bodybuilding. You lose a lot of strength, bro. You lose a lot of power. And that's something I can't put uh, on my bargain right now. I prefer rest, do some heat therapy, and then jump in an ice cold pool. Trust me, that's what I do. I don't have a problem. But intermittent fasting is something I do on a regular. On a regular. That a lot of people like, in the, that's in the gym, right? Carlos, how can you maintain 210 pounds? Oh, I like, I eat, but when I come to the gym, I mean business. That's good, man. So, I mean, going back to my question, and Carlos, what numbers do you think your competitor will be hitting? For instance, let me ah, go. because you will be going up again, whether you like or not. Your that squat will be a fight between you and Gavin, right? So, yes. what, I'm, for it. what I'm asking, <laughs> what numbers do you think? What are the top end? Yeah, uh, here's what. We're going to start from the top to the bottom. Right? I'm not at the bottom. <laughs> Good. One, one, I know for sure. I'll tell you this here for sure. One run is not going to attempt the world record. I know that for sure. He's going to try and squat 325 to 330 squat. You get me? I know that for sure. He's going to bite smart. So if either one of us fail, he's right in between there. The guy is very smart. Good. For Mr. Kaiko, Kaiko does not want any squat record. He's going for the total and he have it in his bench. He already PR twice for the year. You get me? For this new year, he already PR 500, 505, and 510. Damn, bro. Jesus. What the hell are you eating? Steel? <laughs> Good. So, uh, Kaiko is not going to squat uh, um, a 310 kilo. Yeah, I want you to take notes, right? Kaiko is not going to squat a 310 kilo. His best is 307.5 in his whole history. So, it's not like I don't look up to these guys. I look up to these guys. I got to know the game. I got to know what's up. I got to know the weakness. Good. His bench press, he will break the bench press record. That's a must again. Good. His dead method, uh, 350 kilo. Sorry to say something, I'm doing for three reps. <laughs> <laughs> good. So, good. Uh, he will make up numbers. He's a very smart guy, very, very smart. So, he has those numbers very solid on his end. So, because he want to either dethrone, uh, Jesus, in which it could be very tight to Detroit Jesus because that guy is powerful, he's huge, and also he's young, just like all, all of us. 
that is a challenge. But we're talking about the ninety trees. So there, there comes a Gavin. Gavin best number so far because I can tell you he has a big mouth, and I I listen to him very very carefully. I yes, I look up to him. I look at his numbers and so forth. But uh, he, he needs to humble. He needs to humble. And Gavin is coming with his 335, his second attempt. Third, he's coming with a 335, second attempt. Fair, um, uh, he gets it or he doesn't get it, he will go back with that same number. He's opening at least 305, 310 kilos. You get me? Yeah, so when he opened those numbers, I will be that person right there next to him. He's like, yo, don't fail. Don't fail. Don't fail. No. You, so, are them, you are them competitors that literally push others by literally saying that. Yes, 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 yes. They are pushing me. And I, 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 as I said in my video, you guys already know what I'm capable of. Make sure you bring your A game. Simple. If I go and squat the world record first, I'm going to tell you this here, uh, Mo. If I squat the world record first, yes, I'm going to earn it. But here's what. Literally, I've been asked to work double time. Because when he breaks it, I have a lot more in the tank. <laughs> if he doesn't break it, you get it? I'm going to do a LeBron. <laughs> Respect it. We're so, looking forward to it. It's incredible. To me, I just can't wait for this. It tells me how exciting the 93 is. And then people like you, Carlos, are almost making me reluctant to move up a weight class. So fuck you. But anyway. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this to your face too. You have to keep working your ass off because one thing I know for sure. You're not gonna place above me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I have go um uh, one more question on uh, on uh, in terms of like the records here. I know you spoke about the bench or uh, the the squat world record. You're gonna be breaking it, and again, you're not far off that deadlift world record. To be fair, you know what I mean. It's what three seventy three point five, and also if you if you're tripling three fifty. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not triple three fifty, and I deadlift three eighty plus. Yeah. Ah yeah. no, come on, buddy! You're not. You're pulling my leg now. Don't try to pull now. Nah, I, I, I don't believe that. No sir, no sir. <laughs> so I mean, on that deadlift again. Um, last time you competed in, in motor, I think you attempted three six five again. Yeah, that, that's no a small number. That's a big number. And now, as more said you're tripling 350. So where is this top handle deadlift? Where it is? Don't give me the exact number because you don't want to give people the number. But would I say 373.5 would not be an issue to you? It's an issue, yes, because uh, uh, I haven't touched 370. And I'd be very honest to that. Again, I don't have anything to hide. And that number there is uh, quite a challenge. And if I do touch those numbers, trust me, it's going to ring a bell to a lot of people. A lot of people. So what's, I'm what's telling the, you straight. What's the top hand deadlift you've done so far in the gym? Well, I can't tell you that, sir, but I can tell you one <laughs> thing for sure. Right to my 350 for three. Okay. Because I was quite surprised, quite bargain. And they're going to create havoc because the 93 that I'm looking at, the only person, the only person that can chip me on that is Sasha. I got to give him that. Uh, trust me. 365 kilos, I had it. You get me? But uh, my sciatica got tight, real tight. My IT band, sorry. Yeah. My IT band got real tight that day. I was like, damn. A little bit more, I would have pulled more of the muscle. But that, that tight on your skull, it's 365 is moving smooth. Mm -hmm. Smooth. 
So I can even send you a video on that. Basically, basically, what you saying? You've done three sixty five in the gym already. Yes, sir. I've done it before too. I've done it before once. Incredible, incredible. So, in terms of like, of course, the total world record, um, Carlos, it stands the same. Eight eighty eight. Yeah, the same. Literally, passcode I pulled for this meeting was eight hundred and eighty eight kilo. That is the total world record. Is this something you're looking at breaking, or is this something you're looking? Okay, it's a bit too far, but let me get at least close to it because again. Just to refresh your memory <laughs> to people that are listening to us, Carlos um, best 93 total at world. I'm not talking about the IP uh, the Commonwealth at the IPF uh, this year in Malta was 847.5. Right? So yeah, sure. To get to 888 is a big ask. Is it enough? Nah, I think, I think if you minus, I think if you, uh, let's say. So, so closing that gap is 42.5 kilos, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So I know you have a calculator right there, right? Am I? <laughs> I'm actually doing my maths. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So, I don't have to change my numbers in squat. I have that. Yeah. I don't have to change my numbers in deadlift. I have that. I just have to improve them, right? Mm -hmm. What is the 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 least Okay, that I have to get on my bench press. You you do the addition to that. Okay, say no more. <laughs> say no more. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. I'm gonna break it down to you. Right? My best bench with a struggle was 172.5, right? Mm -hmm. Good. What if I bench press at least 195 kilos? Is that what you're looking for in Sheffield? Uh, what if I bench press 195 kilos? <laughs> oh, so what, what if? So, <clears throat> so oh, with, with, yes, sir. with 332, 172.5, and 365, let's say 375, actually, that's why I gave you. That gives you 880, right? So if we're talking about 185 bench, Right, we're already looking 195, at 195. 195. That's why. Yeah, 195. <laughs> Bro, the question is, the question is not what it gives you. The question is, what will you be pulling for that final deadlift to win Sheffield? So that's why everyone, everyone is smart. Win. Everyone <laughs> is smart. <laughs> so what I did in my head, if you be if you bench 195. It's and 900, boy. 900 plus. And a deadlift. We're talking about 902 here. Yeah. Well, 330, 332, 195, and 365s gives you 8. No, 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 no. Not 332, my brother. Not 332. Okay. okay. Remember, yeah, I what? said if Gavin, if Gavin chips the bar, at, yeah. well, not really chipping it. Well, it's chips. And he put 335. Yeah. You get me? But if I squat first, you're going to give him the disadvantage because you have to work harder to get yeah, that. Yeah, because of lot numbers. Yeah. Good. Good, lot numbers. Right? Besides lot numbers, body weight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Good. If I go first, I'm going to give him the option to give me what I need. If he breaks it again, I'm going to break it and I'm going to give him work to do. For, so we're looking at 335 there. You know what I mean? Okay. So 335, 195, and then we have 365, 370, or 375. You guys do the math. 900, 900, Na 900. 900. Bro, let me ask 905, you. 905, yes. 95 you, I, know, I know you said, this is a safe place, by the way. You said you're an open book. This is a safe place. It's not going to go anywhere. Bro, what drugs are you on? <laughs> you're not on any drugs. Bro. <laughs> No, on any drug. You want me to hear? It? You want me to give you the drugs I'm on? I'm going to tell you one. Please. Have liver oil, fish oil, marmite, molasses, coffee. Besides that, <laughs> I use creator. Hold on, hold on. There's a lot of people say, "Oh, God, it's got to be in drugs." I use creator. Okay. I use Mastec, and also I use Isoflex. But all these supplements I cannot use one time. You hear me? Look. This is my energy. 
I think, I think Carlos, after this podcast, you should send us some coffee from the Guyana, please. I need that coffee. Like me. Because yeah. <laughs> I need that coffee, Carlos. I'm sorry, I need it. Because I just did it. My brother. We're talking about... We're talking about 57.5 kilo on top of what you've done in motor, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We I'm... tracks to we tracks to your statement when he said 20 to 30 percent on everything. So oh, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic, I'm a competitor. Yes, sir. I mean that's I'm not I'm not I'm I'm not here. Well, if you guys are a strong man, right? Well, I'm currently not just Guyana Strongman, not just a team Strongman. And I, I'm also a Ruby Strongest. So prior to that now, my strength training, my uh, elite training has gone beyond certain measures. Quite a few people have told me, Carlos, you got to be on something, man. You got to be on something. And trust me, a lot of people... My brothers, I tell you this, I can even send you my water profile. Every single month, I got to make sure that stuff is in order. You get me? I have nado up my butt. I have rado up my butt. And also I have rado and the IPM up my butt. So it's not a lot to be proud, bro. And I'm saying this here. For those who feel and think that I'm on drugs, bro, trust me. I've ticked all the boxes and I'm not putting myself on no harm's way. Get me? To dirty or to put a, a kind of the guy needs to nasty my name under no circumstances. I just want to show the world what a clean body can do. And if all of us can put our heads in a pool and say, here's what we need, we deserve to be paid as a high rank athlete. I think we deserve it. We deserve it. Because look at it. There are some people. I'm not afraid to call names. LeBron James, bounce some brass in basketball and get paid millions. That's a B-ball. Good. Cristiano, Messi, and all the other top-ranked athletes who's getting millions of dollars. And they're not coming at least, at least 200 freaking pounds. We are the ones killing ourselves, pulling a car, pulling a truck, they're living crazy ass numbers, and we're not getting a, even a thousand bucks. We gotta work or shit off. We gotta be begging people, bro. True. Damn. I agree. I what's agree. up with what's up with this picture? Is something wrong <laughs> with this picture? It's true. I agree with you. But one of the things as well, and um, um, uh, Carlos is like, you know, coming from a small nation like again no disrespect to guyana again uh, 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 not in, the, in in a bad and malicious way but coming from a, a very small nation like the guyanas or some of the guys that coming from the east europeans or asia is almost like the people quickly tend to brand people like think oh this person is on drugs do you know what i mean and that drug label is almost instant it's not even about they don't give people like yourself or people like uh, Rondell or the rest the benefit of that thinking these guys have worked really, really hard to get to themselves where they are. As you mentioned in the beginning, you have to spend like, uh, like what, um, hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, for you to get to an international. All that is sacrifice you've made. People don't see that. People just intend to brand people about your own drugs. So my question leading to that is, how do you guys feel when the first instant when you step on the world stage you do very well people brand you this guy's on drugs how does that make you guys feel to be honest what well, makes anyone feel bad though anyone feel bad yeah man when it comes to certain levels uh, according to we guy need saying everyone will will cheer you on Okay, to a level. However, when you get there, the mediocre is going to say, ah, that guy's in drugs. That guy is this, that guy is that. And to quarter of those persons who will give you that hand or give you that uh, negative reaction are those who literally are afraid of you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I have quite a few guys right in the gym. <laughs> I even work out with one of them recently. And you know what I did to him? I go on my phone. I, I sign into my water stuff. Put in my password and everything. Get my scan. And I showed a guy. I said, this here is for you to go and broadcast it to others. That I'm a tested athlete. From then to now. So, honestly, it becomes a separate pain in the ass. All oh, guys and drugs. All oh, guys and drugs. My brother, I go to the gym every living day except for Saturdays and Sundays. Once I don't have any major championship and I walk my butt out. You hear me? I keep telling people, I may not have the gift or the time to go and pick up a Ferrari or pick up a Lamborghini, pick up a Dugati and so forth. But I'm working to get there, buddy. I'm working to get there. And when I do it, I want to say, yo, I've done it in a fashionable manner, in a clean manner, and also in a humble manner. Because man. majority of us athletes, we can say here as well, man, flip the weights, flip the gym. Let's go get fast money. Trust me, bro. There's a lot of there's a lot of negativity in it, bro. But when you climb to the top, there's a very few, a very tiny few people. I'm like, yo, that guy's a work with butter. If you come to Guyana, you get, uh, let's say you spend just, uh, let me say, a, a month among me. You don't have to literally line with me, just come train with me. And you will literally get to understand and get to hear exactly what the folks around me, whether they appreciate me, whether they love me, whether they hate me, whether they, oh, my car is one they say, ah, he just did. No, oh, man. But ask them for a hundred dollars. A simple one hundred dollars. That's uh that's fifty fifty cents US dollar. You just ask them for that. Ah oh, man, I don't have the man, I don't have that. So where the hell or where the fuck you want to talk about my performance? <laughs> and then you want to label me oh I use drugs I have trained two to three clients uh, that uh, they're Spaniards and they're like oh um, man <laughs> uh, it's impossible to achieve such a high level without using performance enhancements I was like yo you want to achieve something you need to let your mind go on a different level Come to the gym, perform, do this, do that. He's like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. Two of them came, started out marvelous. One of guy, one of them fell out. The next Spanish guy, he continued working with me. His name is Enrique. A day like today, he lives, at, uh, I believe it's Colombia or Ecuador. And the intensity that uh, we train together with, because I have a small team, you know I me? Mean? He carries that same intensity now that every now and again on his Instagram, he will inbox me and stuff. He's like, damn, Carlos, everybody, everyone thinks I'm on drugs. I said, welcome to the club. As you remember what you used to turn and tell me, damn, you're crazy, you're this. I said, one cup of coffee and you kick the engines going. You hit those pistons on a different level. The intensity that we train with, my brother, Everyone thinks that my whole clique is on drugs. I'm talking about female to male. I agree. I agree. I think hard work, I mean, with us, especially like in powerlifting, some people don't see the work that we do on the background. As I said, because it's such an individual sport, your performance is only judged on that platform. That's where people will brand you or whatever. But people don't really see the externals. You know what I mean? For Carlos to step on that platform for you to put 847.5 and now we're talking about 905 at Sheffield, there's a lot of blood and sweat that's gone into it. People didn't see that. But when you turn up at Sheffield and total 905 and Kaiko is sitting there with 888.5 and you be like, and then people be like, yeah, because Carlos is on drugs. But people don't realize Carlos worked hard to get to there. And um, Carlos, my next question to you is, of course, you've watched Sheffield at home last year in terms of the competition I went. Can you just talk to me through about your experience when you're watching it 
a home. There is about two or three 90 trees. Uh, cars. Uh, I believe Emil yeah. Krastev was there. Yeah. Gavin. Uh, Amar Kanin was there. Amar Kanin was there. Gavin Keiko. Mm -hmm. Gavin and Keiko, top three, right? Good. But Emil. And then you have Amar. I I, I said to myself, you should have been there. <laughs> I should have been there. Set that ball pace. So when I saw the final standings, I was like, damn, these people are not able. Because I, I, as I said earlier, I, I'm always training. So if I fail, let's say, uh, if I fail 725, you hear me? Yo, I'm going to keep banging 725 and still like stepping, get that shit. And I'm, and I'm getting it for one. I'm getting it for double or triple. So failure leads success. However, if you do not be willing to go through that phase, do not go behind it. Because hmm. there are some things, there are some people when they fail, they say, like, ah, I already tried that multiple times and never get it. You got to keep going, bro. You got to keep going. If you plant mangoes or you plant coconut today how long from now you're gonna get the first mango or the first coconut it's either first two years or the first three years mm -hmm. so you gotta you you gotta keep watering that plant bro a lot of people don't have that patience uh, a lot of people don't have that perseverance mm -hmm. so trust me it takes a lot i agree i agree so would 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 you say because you mentioned that the 493 that was a shepherd last year and you said to yourself for fuck's sake these two embarrass me i should have been there that's probably that's what yeah. you're thinking right no and not literally two three. Oh, three that embarrass you no two okay which can you can you can you drop names who are the three that embarrassed you all right the two below the line that did not place Okay, that's a what Emil and uh, of course Amar. Yeah, and of course you want to say Gavin was was an embarrassment to you as well. Okay, ah, come on, man, you gotta be more humble than that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So is that hey, here's what I got to say? Here's what I gotta say. <laughs> I was once there. You know I me? Mean? I was super overconfident. I know I'm the best of the best. And this here happens to me at a strong man. You know I me? Mean? Yeah. Best of the best. Top shape. That was uh, uh, 2019. No. 2018, sorry. Everyone. Everyone here in Guyana. Oh, Carlos got it, man. Carlos got it. If you see me, I have the hype. I have the crowd. I have everything, man. So that's what I'm saying. I've been there. I know what's up. And you know what I got? I got second. I got second. Everywhere like, oh, Carlos, you're fake. No, if it's not your turn, it's not your turn, buddy. You got to wind it down. Overconfidence is great. It's good. But too overconfident. You know what I mean? You end up crushing your own self. So you know what so who was overconfident here? I want to know who was overconfident. I just Gavin want... was overconfident, man, big time. And then after Sheffield, right? He was on a podcast. Odr, odr, odr. I say this guy for real. Prep for world championship. You get me? So right now, Gavin is above me by just few kilos, just few, few kilos. If he got are we, we going to call it a few because? 847 kilo and Gavin total 880 at Sheffield. That's a lot of no, kilo. no, no. I'm talking the words, words. We're not talking Sheffield, the world. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's a few kilos. You're right. Yeah, that's a few kilos. Good, words, words. Look at this performance, right? Yes. Good. Yeah, that's a few Whether, kilos. No, just a few kilos. However, imagine if I've gotten that squat record. 
where will the men have landed? Okay. <laughs> the moment went back. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay, good. Good. After Sheffield's, right? This is what I see with a lot of lifters, especially Gavin. Again, I've been there. Yeah? You need to simmer. You need to reconsider yourself. Yo, am I ready for this? Why is it I'm not getting it? Why is it this and why is it not? For example, it may not be me this year. It may not be Jonathan. It may not be Gavin. Let's say someone comes from the bottom of the ladder in the 93s and then boom! Everyone gets kicked off. Just like the year with Mitchell Chance. Everyone is like, whoa. You understand? So we got to be very patient in exactly how we work and on how we say things. I felt the fire at Worlds. Everyone is like, yo, Gavin this, Gavin that. Yeah, Gavin got it. I was like, no. No, your performance, your performance is there, but your your ego, bro. You gotta wind it down a bit, bro. You gotta wind down. Too overconfident is beyond measures. So that means so listening I, to himself a bit more. So are you saying well, himself a bit more? So are you saying to me now you are going to Sheffield? You are not too overconfident. No, I'm not confident. For me, I say this. It's another championship. Another great day in the gym. However, you're training different people. Makes sense. You hear me? So would, would the Nano 5 is not too overconfident? Is he just a number you're thinking? I feel like Jones, you're just stretching. You, <laughs> I feel like we've lost Carlos, unfortunately. Yeah. Jones was just stretching and stretching, trying to get a specific thing. Um, I mean, Carlos I, can I mean, join fairly quickly. I'm excited, right? Um, again, um, yeah, I think as more said that we just lost Carlos. Could be probably a a Guyana internet connection. So again, um, Guyana is a long, um, a long, a long place in terms of where we are but yeah to those of us listening to us is like it's great to have these 93 talking this shit and also it's great to see them pushing each other because that's what's going to make powerlifting the best sport where the the, the post want to be to because at the moment like we have got gavin we have got carlos here we have got kaiko and we have got um gustav so these guys at sheffield although they will be going up against each other, but they will be there to represent their weight class. And whatever these guys do outside Sheffield, they will represent powerlifting in general. Do you know what I mean? To me, I'm more excited about that. Um, Carlos, um, have you joined us? Are you back? Yes, yeah, I'm right here, my brother. I'm hearing you loud and clear. That's fine, that's fine, that's cool. So cool, yeah, as I was saying, like, of course, Sheffield is coming. Last year you were Sheffield on, uh, online and you spoke about um, the performance of seven individuals that you saw. Some of them you were happy with, some of them you were, you were a little bit um, disappointed. But my question to you would be is, what is this? Oh, it's gone again. Um, so yeah, um, as I was saying, Carlos, my question to you would be is, what is that performance that you saw at Sheffield across women or men? That wowed you. The one that you saw the performance, you were like, fuck, that is incredible. What is that one performance that actually made you go wow? Apart from the 93 that disappointed you anyway. Uh, one of the main performers was for the females. The females, uh, those ladies, damn, bro. Almost every single female uh, hit some decent numbers for themselves. They push themselves to different levels, especially um, coming out of, out of uh, let's say, um, dehydration process just to make body weight uh, and able to maintain that uh, aspiring attitude, that aspiring drive. Uh, that was one of the main things like, wow, these females go the extra mile just to maintain that. Uh, one of the main performers was uh, this girl, um, Chapon. Mm -hmm. She was, wow, mind blown. 
So when I saw her performance, like, whoa. She has quite a lot. Quite a lot. And I believe she's returning this year also. Damn. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very interesting, isn't it? It's very interesting to see, um, especially to me personally, as you said, the, the women, the men, they did something unthinkable. Right? Don't get me wrong. They were incredible. But what the women did last year at Sheffield is... All I'm going to say to people, if you have the opportunity to come to Sheffield, please come in person. Do not just watch it on a live stream. It does not sell the story. It does not tell you the story. And Carlos, again, I mean, I know you're going to Sheffield this time. You'll be on the platform. My friend, the experience of that place is a different ball game. You go back to Guyana, you probably give up strongman. You probably give up anything you do just because you want to go back to Sheffield again. And I kid you not, that's how you're going to feel. That's how we all felt. We as athletes, myself, of course, everyone on that Sheffield platform is the world best. But we want to be the best. But being on that platform, seeing people, being on that, on, that, uh, on, that, on that arena, you made me personally, this is my personal opinion, it made me push even extra harder. And then thinking, man, I want to be on that platform every single fucking year, even though this year I didn't make it. Fucking prick. Anyway, <laughs> shit happens. Okay. Um, so my last, uh, my last um, few question, Carlos. Um, my, my 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 first question and the last few is: Yes, we spoke about world record. We spoke about people's performance, and we spoke about Guyana. So this is on you now. We did not. I did not ask this question in the beginning. Why powerlifting? Out of all the sports, why did you choose powerlifting? Why? A lot of people ask me that question many times. Powerlifting, besides uh, a one arm, one man army sport, it uh, it gives you that adrenaline. Yes, it gives you that ego. And besides the adrenaline and ego, if you are humble enough, you get me, and you have that uh, mind to pursue, not just records. But to keep improving on, on yourself, on every living aspect, trust me. For example, you fail a squat, you, 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 your mind will rest and like, damn, man. You fail a bench press, you're still going to be a bit agitated. You fail a deadlift, it's like, damn. So it, for white power lifting, it challenges you. It challenges you to be something better, something different. And it's good to be different in many aspects. Because not everyone you will see walk in the gym and pick up five, seven hundred, or even eight hundred pounds for no matter how many reps they want to pull. Okay? You're not gonna see a random person walk in the gym and say, oh, I feel for deadly um squat at seven, eight hundred pounds either. Much as bench press four, five hundred pounds. The mindset of every single lifter or every individual who turns to powerlifting and choose to develop themselves in a so professional manner and also, what you could say, competitive, is what gives an individual the great aspiring attitude to pursue in greatness either altitude or wavering areas. True. I, I, I agree with you. It, I think me, myself, as a, as a sportsman, as well as that powerlifting is the challenge I get in part. I mean, I, of course, uh, I really have a, a, a sports background in the past. I've done a few sports, but I don't think I've been challenged as much as I've been now than before. You know what I mean? I played semi pro uh, football, but as hard as football can be, because now I know people just, my mum my, 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 my always say, like, how can 22 men be running after a fucking ball? That's just stupid. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, but when I was a semi-pro, when she was getting, she was getting the check, she was not complaining about it, but she's only complaining about it now. But anyway, it's talking about it. I've never really been challenged as I am now in powerlifting, almost like, again, as you mentioned there, you know, every squat you load in, even in training or even in competition is almost like, Again, the weight, especially the weight we put on our back, I don't know if a human being should be doing this. 
you know, sometimes I ask myself this, when I load a 300 squat in my garage or a 270, I'm thinking, am I actually supposed to be doing this at 83 kilos? You know, is it actually normal? So it's like that extra challenge to me is that's pro probably made powerlifting really interesting to me. That's why I, I'm in the sport and I stuck around because I always love pushing myself to that boundary, to that limit. So I get what you mean. Yeah. I'm to that now. I think you should come 93. <laughs> don't you worry. have new challenges. It, it, it's you have new challenges. Carlos, don't worry. That 905, you better total 905 or Sheffield because if I come 93, I'm not taking 905. I'm talking about I'm going to be pushing you to 950s. So you better total. Well, no. Well, bring it on, buddy. Bring it on. Of course. So, so, you know, as as much as like... A mil with your with your 180 bench, how are you going to push 950, Jerry? Oh, bro, bro. You see, like, bro, now, you, bro. Now, now, you're, now you're getting disrespectful more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, just leave me Mo, alone. Bro. Mo, Mo, I understand you're a 200 kilo bench press. Leave me alone with my chump change. Be careful. <laughs> I'm coming slowly. Relax. Don't rush it. Oh, no worries. Exactly. You know, leave people with their, their, their shit. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah. Oh, but my my next question to you, um, Carlos. I know we spoke about why you chose powerlifting, and then of course is something like probably stayed dear to you, and powerlifting has given you probably a lot more, and then they're just the sport. Um, in terms of like giving back to the sport, you spoke about you being a judge in your country and all of that. So, what the, apart from powerlifting giving you the friends and the family you met like us in the world in the rest of the world. What else has the sport given you? Because one thing we don't really ask elite athletes is, you're doing this sport, but what are you getting back? Apart from, the, we're not talking about the financial incentive here. We're talking about the sport itself. As a personal life, what has the sport given to you? Yeah. Um, money, as, as I mentioned earlier, is not uh, my main forte, of course. Uh, when I come to gym, let me... I see a lot of people doing craziness. And I tell people, if you want to train, do it like if you're an athlete. Because I, this is what I tell any one of my clients. Imagine me walking out with five, six, seven hundred pounds on my back. And the slightest mistake Okay, the slightest cue and error, I go down, I may not come up, or I go down, and that shit, I got on a different level. Take it from the very first step, you go to the bar. Could be one plate, could be two plate, could be three, different. So you could be doing a shoulder press, you could be doing a leg press, you could be doing uh, cable crossovers, you could do a machine and stuff. Treat it as it is. Not too pushy, not too pacey, but moderate. Understand the muscle, understand the movement. Okay? So, powerlifting has taught me that to give more patience and more accurate attention to not just myself, but to other people who surround you. That literally you're going to walk in the gym and literally you're going to stop doing what you're doing and go and correct someone. That's what I do. And I know for sure you have done so many times. And literally, it grinds you nuts. It's like, what the hell this guy is doing? Yeah. So, Paulette has given me the opportunity to influence others. Okay. I mean, that's, that, I mean, I mean that's, 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 you, that's second to none right there. You know, being able to influence people. Because sometimes it's like, I mean, there's a motto my old man always used to, used to tell me is, Sometimes when you're trying to be an influence into something, don't look at the mass thinking you want to change everybody. No, even if you can, right. out of the a thousand people, if you can change one person, that's good mm -hmm. enough. Do you know what I mean? And what you mentioned, yes. influencing people. If you can be able to influence the nation, you can be able to influence even people around you, your family, to get into something positive, nothing beat that, my friend, nothing beat that. Um, so my last question is, of course, you're coming to Sheffield and potentially if I'm, uh, it's wrong with me to say, bro, you have never been in the UK before, have you? No, my first time. Cool. First time to the UK, my friend. 
are you looking to visit? The weather is terrible, by the way, just to let you know. It's terrible weather. It's cold. It's rainy. Hopefully you have some fun, but it, it's not the best of moments right now. Do but, you uh, I mean, since, since I can't, uh, what was made to understand, Mo is not living far away from the from the venue. So I will be linking with Mo. I'm, you as a, the main aspect, well, not my chaperone, but if I could able to extend my stay, I'll be okay. putting you in charge. So it's like, hey, we're going to go to the club. Hey, we're going to need to check this out. Or don't hey. forget food. Food, food. No remember, problem. <laughs> remember, Mo, Carlos does not lack anything from here top. I remember that. Carlos, my brother. Carlos. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> last few questions my friend before we close up <laughs> my lord my, I, I had a question for you carlos right we've heard the story we've had we we can be looking anywhere from 880 to 900 you know you're gonna be there you're you're not there just to be there you're not there to place ninth and below or fifth and below you're there to go there and take your pie if possible and take All right, your let, uh, listen this here carefully hold on take a quick yeah as I mentioned to many of my Guyanese, um, or we could say countrymen and so forth, how do you feel about Sheffield and so forth? I was like, here's what. I know I'm not uh, close by in many aspects for these, uh, for the top fives. Yes, they're going to outbench me. Some might outsquat me and few might outbed me. But here's what. I will podium. I will place among the top five best among the world. And after that now, a lot of people are going to do deloading. A lot of people are going to do hard intake and all kind of stuff. But here's what. I'm going to continue with that same pace because that's just the cream for the cream, eh? You get me? I'm going to be the sparklers at the world because there's when the big boy is going to set in a different stage. I'm not in a... An, by the way, I'm not in B group anymore. <laughs> true, 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 true. All right. I'm not in B group anymore. I know for sure I'm not this last person for bench press either. No, no, not the last. The first person to bench press. I know that for sure. So, again, may the best man win. Okay. My, my, honestly, my message, my question to you was going to be, what message did you have for your competitors coming to Sheffield? Because obviously you're going to be competing against Jesus. You're going to be competing against Tim Monegati, the 74. You're going to be competing against everyone, you know? So what, what was your message? But it seems your message is, I am not there to place below top five. So everyone will take that on record. I know... I know the top uh, the top five is quite intense because one of five is not walking the park. But Sheffield uh, is uh, who sets the percentage higher. And based on my training, based on the numbers of uh, what we could say put so far on my card, I hope and um, pray every day. I hope I don't get uh, a belly ache, a tummy ache, or a poop ache. That things can go downhill for me. But my message is for everyone. Everyone has the opportunity to perform. And I'll say, as I said before, the pie is already being baked. I'm just looking for my piece. So for those who think that I'm coming just because I'm a mediocre, um, I don't look down. But I do look in now to the 74 and the 83. And those guys, damn, bro. What the hell you guys are eating? <laughs> So, yeah, well, uh, very excited. Hopefully, when you're in Sheffield, I will be there one hundred percent. I've got my tickets. I'll be looking forward to meeting you in person. If I, I mean, after Sheffield, you might be a superstar. You know, so after Sheffield, you might be a superstar. It might be hard to reach you, Carlos. But hopefully, if you perform, Carlos well, might not even say hello to us because he's such a superstar after Sheffield. After Sheffield, yeah, he'll be king of lifts, he'll be everywhere, he'll be on oh, ASN, no, but no, no. hopefully you come back to Sabado right. and have a podcast with us on your performance. No, no, no. Again, family, okay, is paramount. However, brothers in iron, you get me? It's beyond paramount, bro. 
if we able to set something on a different path, <clears throat> therefore, I shouldn't be here. And if money sets it on a different level, therefore, I'm not. You understand me there? Yeah. If yeah. money going to set something different between us, that's not friendship. True. True. I, I, I believe you. And uh, again, Carlos, the World Games is coming. Have you thought about it? Yes, but I don't know where's the position with the World Games. Uh, Be three uh, award. Uh, uh, Be podium award. Come third award, you qualify automatically. No, that's for Worlds. No, I'm saying I'm saying for the World Games. If you come third award next year. You qualify automatically for the world games. There's also alternative mm -hmm. routes right. because there's there's routes such as um regions get wild cards. So it's not also put him in awards, especially for South America. Being in a good I think you need to be I can't remember what percentage of the world record it is, but you get an automatic wild card for each region. The highest GL, by the way, for each region gets an automatic wild card. So wild Carlos card. is in a position where the world games is 50% for you run now as we're talking for you to get to the world games well uh <clears throat> with my performance so far i believe i've already earned that wild card because i dethroned brazil by 12 and a half kilos yeah so and, i think carlos uh, is with his guys world games card <laughs> lined up already the world games, carlos, when you go to the world games can you say hello to me and mo <laughs> yes why not sure because we, we we will struggle to get to the world games. <laughs> Why are you chatting, bro? Why are you chatting nonsense, Jurens? No, 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 no. Jurens is he's sleepy. He's not. He's not all there now. So let's just leave him alone. Interesting. My brother, brothers, brothers, listen to this carefully. Uh, I don't know who's gonna send me the invitation or so, but uh, Brazil have been to the world games quite a few times. You get me? as a top rank athlete, and that's David Coimbra. And I've dethroned David Coimbra. So looking forward this year to, for the World Games, damn, bro, that would be very great. I want to know what the cash price looks like since we are talking about money now. Probably no cash price. I don't think for World Games you get cash prize. But it will be like a mini Olympics, which will be... So in terms of like for your federation, so... Performing well at Worlds, performing at a level as high as World Games, even here in the UK, I think it will be something that will get recognised. So for your country like um, Guyana, if you perform at World Games, in fact, just getting to World Games and having your flag there, you know, it will be on live TV. You can walk with a flag. They'll have the whole ceremony and everything. I think it would be amazing, man, for your federation, for you and for the community you have back there. The profile. Your, yeah, prof man. your profile, as always, will be, will be uh, will just amazing. Go. Um, yeah. you, so, you can go to all the all that you can go to your John Doe company and tell them hello. This exactly. is World Games. Yeah. I'm a World Games. Right <laughs> Give me some money. <laughs> you know, I'm already a world rank athlete, bro. I just want to become one of the greatest now. Yes, sir. As I, as I mentioned before, God's grace are able to earn that world title. Earning it is not the the what we could say the the baking pie, okay. You know what is make it merry the merrier? Mm -hmm. Is retaining it. Retaining it, yes, sir. Once, once you retain it, okay, one time, two times, everybody's like, yo, this guy is a real deal. There's when you get the, your tap on your shoulders and it's like, yo, you've done it. He have done it. True. So this year World Championships, trust me, my brother, you have said it. It's gonna be an epic battle. I can't epic. I mean, on that note, my friend, I cannot wait. This is gonna be amazing. And literally, again, um, Carlos, thank you for coming. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you. And it's a great. And I can't wait to meet a chef. And myself and more will be there. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna be there. I think the day before, the two days before, Sheffield, one of you guys. I mean, again, we can catch up even before the competition. No problem. Literally, it will, be, it will be an honor for me to hang around world class athlete like yourself and the rest. It will be amazing for me to. You have you have, you have more. Moe is already world class. He been to Sheffield's 
They don't respect me, bro. They don't respect me at all. Look, they look. Don't. I, I, I believe I, I believe the reason why they don't respect you because you're Britain. <laughs> and also because he dropped the 395 deadlift. Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's just end it there. Um, for those of us listening to us, guys, <laughs> you have a question, you have a comment for Carlos, drop in a comment or drop Carlos a, a message or drop it to me and I'll translate that to Carlos again. Uh, because again, Carlos, a lot of people we get here, people always come to us saying, oh, when I reached out to this person, I didn't get a message, I didn't get a, my, my question answered. So guys, again, I will say Carlos is a very friendly person. Reach out to him, ask you your question. He's a coach. He can help you in any other way. Um, so my friend, I will see you at Sheffield. On that note, guys, and we'll see you and speak to you very soon.